In this video traders, let's look at why is short float important? Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm welcome to you. Thanks so much for joining me. All right, so you might have heard about selling short, short float, shorts of stock, shorts of trap, short squeeze, all this type of stuff, especially with AMC, GME, all those kind of stocks that we've heard so much about and why people are positioned long. The thesis generally hangs on, or it started out to be hanging on. Hey, we think the shorts have got to cover this and it's going to rip up. And there's no doubt that short squeezes can be brutal. Go and check out Volkswagen many years ago if you wanna see how brutal a short squeeze can really be. So what does it mean when we look at the short float? What's the short ratio? How does it all work out? So selling short, I don't need to go over this. You guys probably know this. I've done a video where I've gone into intricate detail about the process of borrowing a share, paying a margin, paying a, a borrowing fee, selling, by, uh, selling that into the market and buying it back. So basically what you're doing is you're borrowing shares. Let's use that as a summary for now rather than going over all ground. If you don't know about shorts and you're kind of still trying to work out in your head, you can go and check out a video I did where I went into good, some good detail on that. So you borrowed the shares and now you're selling them into the market. That's how you have to short a position. Most of us retail traders, if it's the borrow available, it's all done automatically. Anyway, what is the float? What is the short float more importantly and why? Is it important? So quickly, the float is a number of shares available for public trading. So when a company does an IPO, it's how many shares they have available for public trading. Now, the short float is the number of shares borrowed from that float and sold short. So if we can imagine 100,000 shares in the float, that's super low, by the way. You know, we'd be millions, but I want to kind of get that number. Uh, an easy way to imagine in your mind. Sometimes we're talking about 20, 30 million, you kind of go, what, what, what? So let's use it as an arbitrary number, It'd be way more than that in the real world. So imagine 100,000 shares are in the float. Companies issue those shares are in the float, fine. Those are the shares that can be traded day to day by the public. Now, someone comes along and you've got uh, hedge fund manager A, you've got trader B, you've got all these type of people, and they have borrowed those shares from the long-term holders. I'm going to, again, I'm going to super detail about the nuances of that. And they have sold those short, and they have to be reported. And once they're reported, we get an idea of how many shares are all short float number. So if, for example, 20,000 shares were borrowed from that float and sold short, we would have 20% short float. In other words, 20% it would be, you know, 20,000, out of the 100,000 is short, that's 20%, right? If it was 50,000, it would be 50%, et cetera, et cetera. And sometimes we can get higher numbers because people are borrowing shares that aren't available. No going into that sort of stuff now, but very briefly, you can see how the higher number means a lot more people have sold it short. I'm gonna take to a moment why it's important, but I wanna run through this kind of structure first. And uh, then we talk about short ratio. So short ratio is a bit more of an interesting metric, right? A short ratio basically says, hey, what's the average volume done during the trading day? And then let's see how many shares there are held short. And then let's work out how many days it would take to cover. Sometimes it's called days to cover. So in other words, let's imagine we have Average volume per day is done on this instrument, 100,000 shares. If the short float is 500,000 shares, remember that's the average volume, not the float. If the short float is 500,000 shares, it's gonna take five days to cover. The short ratio is five. So in other words, if every trade was bought back, it would take those shorts five days to cover based on the average trading volume. It's rough because not every sh every buyer is gonna be got a short cover, uh, the volume can spike back and forth, but it gives you a rough idea. You know, if that number's super, super high, it's gonna take shorts a long time to unwind. Okay. That's what all these things mean. Why is it important? Okay, so it's important because we want to know how many shorts are in a trade. Why? Two reasons. One, you might want to consider joining the shorts. You might say, hey, this has been, this has been researched thoroughly by people with a lot more resources than me. I wanna get on that side of it. I wanna get involved in the short side. And you might wanna see what is a heavily shorted stock. Fine, that's one way. That's, not, not a, that's a less frequently used strategy. The more frequently used strategy is to say, hey, I'm hunting for short squeezes. I'm hunting for stocks that potential to rip to the upside because a lot of people are trapped short. Trapped short being, hey, that float is high compared to the float that's available. So the short float is high compared to the actual float. That means a lot of people are short. And so what does that mean? Especially now, when we look at the average daily volume and that short ratio is high, and you go, hey, that's gonna take them a long time to cover. So if price goes higher and higher and higher and higher, and they're wrong in the trade, because traders can be wrong, 
they've got to come through a very, very small door. There's a lot of people with a lot of share trying to get through a very small door, especially when the daily volume is relatively low or this, this short ratio is, is relatively high. You know, if that's running at 10, 20, 30, 40, 30, maybe more than that, running at those sort of numbers, uh, well, hang on a second. If that price continues to go higher, they are going to be pressured uh, with a significant loss on the books, unrealized loss. They're going to have to cover the position and there's a lot of other people who are covering as well. That is gonna cause buying because to cover a short, you have to buy the shares back. So what are you doing? You're creating buying pressure as well as longs coming in, as well as fresh speculators coming in, as well as people like the AMC crowd, GME, these kind of Wall Street bets stuff that's coming in purely because of that. You're gonna get this potential big move to the upside and rocket and if you're long you're gonna make a lot of money if you're short you're gonna get hurt so that's the theory on why short flow is so important short float is so important and it's only really it's, it's a strategy that, that sort of stands on on its own right do you take into account the short flow if you're day trading uh, probably not you may do you may say hey i want to buy this long because it could pop to the upside and you may but it's really something you've got to be very specific about where it fits in with your decision making process so understanding hey how important the float is short and maybe you have a strategy that's, that actually looks for high short floated stocks or stocks with a high short ratio and then you add some technical analysis analysis on top of it and say hey this is a high type flag on a daily and it's got a high short ratio and we've had a positive catalyst there's my buy that's the trades that I look for so it's useful to get a kind of x-ray into who's holding the position and what and who potentially could be trapped now some shorts can hold these things for a long period of time and they're not going to get hurt and so there's a you're making a lot of assumptions here when you buy a stock based on a high short ratio and a high short flow is that um, one, they haven't covered already because there's a bit of a delay to the reporting. And two, is that they quite happy to stick with it. So some of these guys have you know, got really deep pockets. They're like, hey, we think it's going to zero over the next five years. If it doubles, trebles, we don't care because the position size accommodates that. Very often they think like that. And, that, and, they, and then, so this is meaningless. They're like, we're staying short regardless. We're paying the fee, we're staying short. We think this is going to zero and they stick to the trade. And then, so your thesis of the higher it goes, the more they're gonna get squeezed is kind of null and void. That's not always the case. You know, it makes sense, right? A lot of people are trapped, 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 especially when you get those Markets that are pushing higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. They're looking at this themselves going, it's going to take us a while to unwind this. Maybe they've got additional pressure elsewhere in the market, other positions. If you can research funds that have got positions elsewhere that are underwater, what are the things they're going to have to liquidate? Probably the stuff that's the highest risk. That might cause some upside pressure. And then the day, you might not even get a ridiculous short squeeze. You might just get persistent buying. And persistent buying adds to the pressure, helps your long trade. So that's why short float is so important. Check it out on finviz.com. It's a free, good free tool off the top of my head, which gives you the short flow. Take care, keep your risk managed, whatever you do. See you next one. Bye-bye.